morning. Thank you for the committee for uh, inviting me to talk about this topic, something I'm really passionate about. Uh, FUSE is a program uh, put on by SAGES. It's a curriculum to teach you about safety around energy devices. Uh, it is, there is funding from industry, but there's a lot of effort that goes into uh, teaching you about generic principles uh, that carry across a variety of different uh, uh, energy devices. So it's not about specific proprietary devices. So, so why, are we, uh, why are we here? Uh, who cares about this? We've been using this for so long. Uh, these are very easy to use, so what's the problem? Why do we need a curriculum to teach us about devices we use every day in the operating room? So why don't we just do a little show of hand. Who here knows the difference between cut and coag? I guess most people were here in the session this morning. Uh, so so that's, that's interesting. And most of us, or a lot of people at least, uh, who are uh, using these devices on a day-to-day -day basis don't know the difference. Uh, who here can assemble their own favorite device, the you know, dis ultrasonic dissector, the ligature, whatever, without any help from the nurses. You guys are okay, most of us can do it. Uh, not everybody can. Uh, who here has ever been associated with it? So you're buzzing on your thumb, you're buzzing, and then, oh, you get a burn on your finger. Who's had that happen? Uh, many of us have. I actually just had one last week on my index finger. And uh, who's here looked after a patient to who's, uh, who, who sustained an injury from a, an iatrogenic injury uh, from an energy device? Most of us have seen that or heard of a horror story uh, in the hospital. And lastly, uh, who's ever used an energy uh, device without any prior training or without reading the instructions on the package before using it? Uh, most of us have as well. So energy devices are extremely useful. We use it every day for dissection, for hemostasis, uh, for cutting tissues, uh, ablating tissues, and so on. And, and they're extremely amazing. However, uh, they can lead to severe complications to the patients. We've heard a lot about OR fires, patient burns, interference with implantable devices, and the list goes on. And secondly, it's not so much that they're also dangerous. There also tends to be a poor understanding amongst operators as well. Uh, so there's also a lack of insight into uh, some of the problems. Just to throw some numbers out there, there's uh, hundreds of OR fires that happen every day, uh, uh, or sorry, an annually, every day would be really bad. Um, and uh, most of them cause uh, serious uh, disfigurement or, or minor injuries. Uh, some of them can also cause mortalities as well. Uh, electrosurgical burns are extremely common. They happen very frequently. Not so much, uh, not just uh, the impact on the patient, but also the impact on the providers, the healthcare system, the hospitals. Uh, there's hundreds of millions of dollars annually that are spent on uh, medical legal cases as well. So a huge, huge impact and, and a huge public safety issue. And the, the public is getting more and more attention to this. You see these grotesque uh, images uh, on the news. This is from the NBC Today show uh, from a day procedure. Uh, here's a more recent one uh, during a cardiac surgery. Uh, the heart being set on fire. Uh, it is a new definition for heartburn. And uh, this is another example from a few years ago of a congressman uh, who had a, a mortality uh, from a routine gallbladder operation and had a current diversion injury. So, so there's more and more public attention to this. Can it happen at your institution? I think we've shown this picture several times today, but this is from a day procedure in a pediatric population. Uh, happened from a burn from a dispersive electrode or grounding pad. Um, and, uh, and I can tell you, this, this injury is 100% preventable, and it's really up to us to take the initiative to, to familiarize with ourselves with how to use these devices safely and effectively. This is a case I was involved with, actually, as a junior resident. Um, we, were, uh, we were on the acute care service, and we got consulted on a patient who had a uh, post-op day one to a, 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 a robotic prostatectomy. Very routine case. The case went really well. And then post-op day one or two, started uh, got the diffuse peritonitis and went into intra-abdominal sepsis and did an exploratory laparotomy, and we saw this huge hole in the, uh, in the cecum. Um, and uh, several uh, months later, after repeated laparotomies, open abdomens, and so on, this is what the patient would look like. Um, so a lot more morbidity. Um, in fact, electrosurgical injuries in laparoscopy and MIS are extremely common. They're quoted, estimated at one to two per thousand. And it doesn't sound like a lot, but when you consider the millions of cases that are done annually, you begin to see this big uh, impact uh, on society. Here's another case that we've already seen uh, this morning, a, a gynecologic, a benign gynecologic procedure that was done uh, with a laparoscopic uh, ultrasonic dissector. And uh, as Dr. Robinson talked about this morning, uh, with the Achilles heel with that device is that the tip gets really, really hot. In laparoscopy, you don't feel the tip. Uh, so, so in this case, there was a perforation in the rectum 
caused uh, pelvic sepsis and the patient who required um, laparotomy, a washout, uh, ostomy, and so on, a lot more morbidity than they signed up for. So that was, that's, that's, they're dangerous, right? And the other half of the equation is that there's a poor understanding amongst uh, uh, providers. Uh, so this is a uh, pilot exam that was given to SAGE's leaders, uh, people you would expect are really at the forefront of uh, technological advancements uh, in, in, in patient safety. And actually, uh, the baseline scores were pretty low at 59%. 31% uh, didn't know how to correctly handle an OR fire. 13% did not know that the thermal injury can extend beyond the jaws of a bipolar instrument. I mean, intuitively, it makes sense, you know, all the thermal energy is restricted between the jaws, but in fact, it's not. And 10% thought that a dispersive pad or grounding pad uh, should be cut to fit a child. Uh, in that same, uh, uh, same time frame, uh, they did a postgraduate course uh, similar to this, uh, where they had 27 participants uh, give them a pre and post examination. Uh, Pre-exam scores were again low, 55%, but what this study also showed was that um, after a formal curriculum, you can, you can potentially, at least in the short term, bridge that knowledge gap. And this really was one of the impetus to get the FUSE curriculum going. Um, this knowledge gap is not a North American problem. It's a universal global problem. This is a multi-center uh, study that was done by one of our colleagues, uh, Dr. Yusuke Watanabe, who uh, took 88 general surgeons uh, throughout uh, 15 institutions in Japan, give them a, a validated uh, uh, knowledge examination, a, an exam of s uh, safety with electrosurgery, and the mean exam scores were, again, about 60%, very similar to uh, the North American population. There was no difference with how many years you were in independent practice. Uh, again, 92% were not familiar with best practices, 19% didn't know how to manage OR fires, and 72% didn't know what the role of the dispersive electrode was. So, so the strong uh, knowledge gaps. This is a survey that was done to, to ask uh, participants or leaders, again, uh, where do they get most of their knowledge uh, with respect to energy devices uh, and safety? And the majority said that they get it from industry. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's a very natural, organic, symbiotic relationship between industry and surgeons. Great things happen, and SAGES really exemplifies that. Um, but I think what it indicates is that we really need to own these devices. We really need to know how they work, how, how to uh, troubleshoot them, how to use them optimally, and safely, and effectively. So high complications and poor understanding. So this creates a, a perfect storm for bad things to happen and a knowledge gap amongst uh, surgeons. Because at the end of the day, and I think when I told my, uh, my family members about this, they kind of freaked out a little. And I think most patients wouldn't really feel comfortable going uh, under uh, the knife if they knew that our, the surgeons didn't have formal training in the device that they're going to use in their surgery. It's like getting on an airplane. Uh, I mean, I came from Montreal, and I think I would be really scared if I heard the pilot talking to the industry rep and saying, oh, we, we got this new navigation system today. Uh, I've never tried it before. Let's, let's give it a shot. Uh, you, he just showed me the buttons to press, and I, I don't think I would want to get on, on that airplane. So that was a problem. This is what FUSE, this is really the impetus behind FUSE. It's a basic curriculum to teach you the science and the safety principles behind energy uh, uh, devices. There's a web-based uh, curriculum. There's a book format as well. And it's a, it's a curriculum for surgeons by surgeons with a lot of input from an entire multidisciplinary team. There's anesthesiologists involved, engineers. Um, you have nurses. So, so there's an entire multidisciplinary team that came together to make this happen. There's online modules, there's a fuse manual that goes with it, and we'll talk about there's also a hands-on workshop that we put together to go with the curriculum. These are what the domains look like. The concentration of the learning objectives uh, are, um, are really in the adverse events uh, uh, domain, but it's really to make it really practical. This is not just a bunch of physics equations. It's a way to make it very clinically uh, relevant and, and digestible for you. And the focus is on safety. This is a video, I'm not sure if it's uh, gonna work, there's a little bit of audio uh, in it, but this is just show you an example of uh, what the curriculum content looks like. Um, there's a narrator, the there's the video problem. modules, the uh, there's, uh, desired, it's very the user friendly, there's written text and so on. Um, so the it, uh, I highly recommend uh, for you to get access, and also the these are free on www.fuseprogram.org, uh, free access for everybody, um, to, uh, anytime. 
And uh, there's also a certification examination to go with the FUSE program um, for those who want to take it an extra step and uh, have a certification that says that they've demonstrated the basic competencies of safety. And this isn't just an exam that was just developed uh, with random questions that we picked out of a hat and put together on a piece of paper. These are, this is a three-year process that took place. Um, there's an entire process of getting experts together, together develop questions, a validation process that was involved, and really to develop a high-stakes exam. Uh, we just published uh, some of the results uh, of, of some of the predictors of how to pass this exam, and by no other than Dr. Robinson, uh, who spearheaded this. Uh, there was a tw 227 beta testers of this exam. Pass rate is about four out of five people passed. And the one predictor is really if you spend more than two hours studying on the FUSE uh, online modules, then you're more likely to pass than not. Interestingly enough, years in surgical practice had nothing to do with uh, predicting your pass score. Uh, your self-reported expertise had nothing to do. So again, it's, uh, it shows that if y just because th you think that you're an expert in it, that has nothing to do with it. Uh, and, and also participation in postgraduate course and reviewing the FUSE manuals were also not predictors. So it's really about self-directed learning and going and learning uh, through the online modules is high more high yield. Uh, one of the things that we've also done is that uh, we've tried to integrate this into uh, residency programs, try to teach residents at an early stage how to incorporate this into their day-to-day um, -day, uh, OR. So we, uh, we combined, we put the, the electrosurgery content into one hour didactics and combined that with a benchtop hands-on course um, to, to complement some of those uh, lectures. Uh, we teach them how to set everything up. We teach them how, what kind of tissue effects they can cause using steak. Uh, and meat, and um, and uh, we also have different setups and uh, has to show them how adverse events can occur in open and in laparoscopy. Uh, we took we did a randomized control trial, uh, multi institutional, uh, about 300 participants. We took them through the entire curriculum, and scores were uh, they started off at about a 46 percent, and that increased to 84 percent in the post curriculum. And at three months, uh, it dropped down to 68 percent, but it was still better than it was at baseline. Um, but specifically, when we compared, th compared the groups that just did the curriculum on its own compared to those who did the hands-on workshop, we saw that despite starting at similar scores uh, at baseline, uh, immediately after the curriculum, everybody improves. However, the, the ones who do the hands-on workshop had a slight advantage, and this uh, advantage is accentuated in the long term. So at three months, they do, they do better as well. We took this one step uh, further and we took a subset of these and looked at the results one year uh, after the fact. And again, we see that the, those who did the hands-on workshop did a little bit better. But more importantly, it, and this is important, that just because you do the FUSE online modules and you do it once, there's a good chance you're gonna, there's gonna be a drop in knowledge over time. So it's important to, to, to refresh your knowledge and to revisit some of these modules. Uh, those who did the hands-on workshop had, had more retention of their knowledge in the long term as well. Uh, and when we looked at the score predictors, uh, we saw that uh, uh, participating in hands-on workshop was a predictor of your of improvement score, and also uh, what your baseline score was was also a strong predictor. And again, no association with self-perceived competence, a negative association with self-perceived comfort. So again, this shows how lack of insight into these uh, uh, and safety principles. So where do we go from here? Uh, if the FUSE principle has really uh, caught on a lot, uh, uh, like wildfire. Um, there's many uh, testing sites available now throughout the US, uh, about 25, and there's an additional five or 10 that are gonna come out in the next few uh, months as well. We have our first international uh, test center in Japan, thanks to the work of uh, Dr. Watanabe, who uh, taught this course to uh, about 10 institutions uh, by now. Um, and uh, and, and uh, the thing is, We've given this course to so many places. We've taught over a thousand uh, residents and, and surgeons. And uh, what's important is that it doesn't matter if it's a junior trainee who's just started out and it's their first month and they're so excited to use the Bovi pencil for the first time, or if it's a seasoned surgeon who's been around for decades, they're all very excited uh, when they do the course. Uh, and actually they get a little scared too because these are principles that have been, uh, um, uh, that, that, that they're now finally becoming familiar with. And if you're interested in bringing this back to your institution, uh, please ask us. Um, we'd be a, uh, we have a lot of resources uh, at your disposal to help you do that. Thank you very much for your time.